Dampness in Buildings and Diagnosis, Module 8 Sources of Damp, Penetrating Damp There are just a few slides here simply showing examples. Features of Penetrating Damp Free water in depth in the structure Often local to external defects Efflorescent salts often present No groundwater salts although possible sodium chloride seawater near coast due to windblown rain of spray, eruption of finishes, plaster and paint, localised heavy patches of mould, mould beneath wallpaper and windblown rain facing prevailing winds. Here we are, just a few, missing downpipe, water pouring down the wall, why would we worry? It's not the electricity or rather the um, telephone cable. The big problem here is the penetrating water. If there's embedded timbers in there, there will be a problem or a potential problem. Water penetration around four back paper, southwest facing wall, reaching the taking the prevailing winds, no foil and foil backed. You can see pinholes in the foil back paper at the bottom where water is getting through. Long-term water overflow, a lot of algae around there. It must have been flowing down there for a long period of time. There's also Pazizer fungus on that wall, although you can't see it. Severe long-term pipe leak. Again, see the water runs and that's dry rot has developed and the fruiting body over the doorway. Rain penetration through defective mortar. Well, it was rather missing. The mortar was effectively missing between the stones. The stone-built cottage, I'm still surprised it's standing up. You've got water penetration. The chalk shows where it's once penetrated to. When I was there, there was no water penetration, but it poured like mad. And we got the following result. The water started to come through. No wonder the little figures look so peed off. Defective flashings on the lean-to roof. Neighbour put a lean-to roof against this utility room. Uh, told the occupant it was condensation. Significant external defects in the finish. Look at the picture on the left closely. You can see all that render is badly cracked. Picture on the right shows looking out the front over the porch. That faced the southwest prevailing winds. And rain just poured down there through the flashing at the back. And there was no roof left, basically, or timbers in that roof, fully full of dry rot. Sorted growths, could use a plant or a piece of growth as a gutter stop. Mould beneath wallpaper. The mould is beneath the wallpaper, not the surface. It's caused by a water leak in this case, or rather a drain leak in both cases. And the mould is beneath the wallpaper. You can see the staining on the surface, but it is not the mould. It's only a stain. The mould is beneath the wallpaper. Water penetration from a path above. It's passing into a little room, a cellar that was converted. Note the little receptacle for the penetrating water. Water passing through plaster dabs. Fixing plasterboard dry lining. Obviously, the plaster dabs are very permeable. The water passes straight through. Well, no comment. I expect they use the roots as cup holders or coat hangers. And finally, how to fix a leaking gutter and overflow. Again, very ingenious, very interesting. But uh, there we go. Note, where water penetration is identified, or indeed thought to be occurring, it is really essential to investigate any embedded timbers in these areas. Why? Failure to do so may lead to the development of rots. If it stays wet long enough, it will rot, but the timbers in such areas will always be at risk to rot. End of Module 8